Okay, today we're going to look at resistance in a bit more detail. If you look at a wire, what sort of resistance would it have? What properties would affect the resistance? So the first thing to look at would be the length there, the length of the wire. So would you expect a shorter wire to have a larger resistance than a longer wire? Uh, would, would it be the same? So for the same material and the same sort of thickness and area of cross-section, uh, you would expect the longer wire to have more resistance, uh, with the resistance electricity more on the electrical current. So it turns out that the resistance is actually proportional to the length. So if you did have one that was twice as long as the other one, uh, so that's, that's one metre and this is actually two metres, so it was twice as long, then you should get twice the resistance from that from there because they're proportional to each other. So if you were told that one wire was one metre long, that one was two metres long, and um, this was, say, a resistance of 10 ohms, we would expect the resistance of this one here to be twice as much as that because they're proportional. So you should double it. You're doubling the length, so you should double the actual resistance. Okay. Uh, other factors though, as I said, would be the area of cross-section. So with a larger area of cross-section there, a thicker wire compared to a thinner one, that area of cross-section there at the end, A, if it was actually bigger, what would that do to the resistance? Well, there should be more charge carriers available in that larger area of cross-section. And so you should be able to carry more current for the same length of wire and the same type of material. And so you find the resistance will go down for a larger area. So as that area of cross-section gets bigger, you've got more charge carriers, we expect the resistance to go down. And in actual fact, they're inversely proportional. Resistance is inversely proportional to area. So if you get twice the area of cross-section, we're gonna get half of the resistance. So for twice the area of cross-section there, we're gonna get just half of the resistance. So uh, you can apply that to some questions as well. Right. Yeah, other factors that affect it would be the resistivity of the material. Resistivity. So that really depends on the type of material it is. Is it copper, is it brass, um, is it silver, steel or whatever? And so there is a relationship there. So the greater the resistivity, the greater the resistance will be. So that's another thing to use later on. That's the symbol rho, it's a Greek letter, but it just means the resistivity. Okay, and that will be given to you in tests and stuff like that in a table or in the question. So let's try and put these three ideas together. Uh, we've got some notes I've before here. So quick recap. First of all, the length does affect the resistance. They're proportional to each other. A larger length will give you a larger resistance. In fact, if you triple it, you'll get triple the resistance. If the area of cross-section was up 10 times, say, we'd expect the resistance to go down because the current's going to go up. So um, 10 times area of cross-section, you'll get one-tenth of the resistance. And uh, the resistivity is a measure that sort of tells you the difference between the different materials. If you combine all those ideas about two proportionalities and one inverse one, you end up with this formula here for resistance to work out the resistance of any piece of material. Let's uh, say, for example, a wire. So you would need to know the resistivity of the material, and you can see this table here gives you some of the values, uh, if I look at some of those there. Uh, in this case, copper. So copper's got a resistivity of 1.67 by 10 to the minus 8. If you put that into a formula there then, here, and times by the length of the particular wire we've chosen here, which is 510 uh, centimetres, yeah, and the area, you would get a total 